So let's say if we have a linear function, f of x is equal to 2x plus 1 over the interval 1 to 5. How can we find the average value of the function over the interval 1 to 5? Well, let's draw a graph. So we have a y-intercept of 1 and a slope of 2. And so we're focused on the interval 1 to 5. Now, according to the mean value theorem, the area under the curve, which is basically the area that's shaded, that's equal to the area of the rectangle at some value c. Now the average value is f of c. That's what we're looking for. That's the average value of the function. And it occurs when the area of the rectangle is equal to the area under the curve. So the area under the curve is the definite integral from a to b. The area of the rectangle, I need to redraw it, it's going to be the width of the rectangle times the height. So the height is basically f of c. The width is b minus a. So it's the height times the width. Now, to get the average value, we need to isolate f of c. So we need to divide both sides by b minus a. So the average value is 1 over b minus a of the integral a to b f of x dx. Now, if we were to plug in 1 into this equation, f of 1 is going to be 2 times 1 plus 1, so that's going to be 3. And f of 5, which is here, that's going to be 2 times 5 plus 1, which is 11. If we average f of a and f of b, 3 plus 11 is 14 divided by 2, that's 7. Now, do you think the average value, will it be less than 7, equal to 7, or greater than 7? How will it compare to the average y value at these x values. It turns out for a linear function, the average value of the function will be the average y value in the interval a to b. Now, if it's not linear, it can vary. But for a linear function, we should expect 7 as our answer because that's the average y value from a to b. Now, the average x value, if you average 1 and 5, you're going to get 3. So for a linear function, c is going to equal 3. And that's what we need to calculate. We need to calculate f of c, the average y value, and c, the x value, where the area under the curve equals the area of the rectangle. So let's see if c is equal to 3 and f of c is equal to 7. So let's start with the formula. So the average value is going to be 1 over b minus a times the definite integral from a to b f of x dx. So we know that a is 1, b is 5. So this is going to be 1 over 5 minus 1. Integral from 1 to 5, f of x is 2x plus 1, and then times dx. 5 minus 1 is 4. The antiderivative of 2x, that's going to be 2x squared over 2. And for 1, it's x, evaluated from 1 to 5. Now, we could cancel a 2. If we plug in 5, 5 squared is 25 plus 5. And then minus, if we plug in 1, it's going to be 1 squared plus 1. Twenty five plus five is thirty, and one plus one is two. If we factor out one fourth, it's going to be thirty minus two, which is twenty eight, and one fourth of twenty eight is seven. So notice that the average value 
is indeed equal to the average y value in the interval. So the average value of the function is 7. Now let's set the average value of the function equal to f of c. So the average y value is 7. f of c is going to be 2c plus 1. Subtracting 1 from both sides, 7 minus 1 is 6. And if we divide by 2, c is 3. So for a linear function, c is the average of a and b. And the average value of the function for a linear function is the average of f of a and f of b. And I'm running out of space. Let's try another problem. So what if we don't have a linear function? Let's say if we have x squared from 0 to 4. Let's see how the average value of the function will compare to f of a and f of b, the average of those two numbers. So let's calculate f of a plus f of b divided by 2. So that's going to be f of 0 plus f of 4 over 2. So when x is 0, y is 0. When x is 4, 4 squared is 16. 16 divided by 2 is 8. So the average y value, I'm going to write it like this, is 8. And the average c value, or rather the average x value in the interval, that is if we average a and b, we can see the midpoint is 2. So now let's calculate c and f of c in this problem. So it's going to be 1 over b minus a. So a is 0, b is 4. So this is going to be 4 minus 0. And then we have the integral from a to b, f of x, dx. So the antiderivative of x squared is x cubed over 3, evaluated from 0 to 4. So if we plug in 4, it's going to be 4 to the 3rd over 3, and then minus 0 to the 3rd over 3. 4 to the 3rd divided by 4 is 4 squared, and 4 squared is 16. And 16 over 3, as a decimal, is 5.33, or 5.3 repeated. So in this example, notice that the average value of the function is less than the average y value. Now let's calculate the c value that corresponds to that average value. So the average value, let's set it equal to f of c. So f of c is x squared. And the average value we said was 16 over 3. So let's take the square root of both sides. So this is going to be 4 over the square root of 3, and that's equal to x. Now granted, we get two answers, plus or minus, but the negative answer is not going to be in this interval. So we'll stick with the positive answer. Now you can rationalize it if you want. So if you multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 3, this is going to be 4 square root 3 over 3. And so the decimal value for that is... 2.309. So in this case, this is the c value as well. I should have wrote this as c squared instead of x squared. f of c is equal to c squared. Notice that c is greater than the average x value on the interval a to b. And so if you don't have a linear function, c is not going to be the midpoint of a and b. And the average value of the function is not going to be the average y value if it's not a linear function. But if it is a linear function, then the average function value will be the average y value. Let's try one more example. So let's say f of x is equal to the square root of x on the interval 4 to 16. 
go ahead and find the average value of the function and find a value of c that corresponds to it. So let's start with the equation. The average value is going to be 1 over b minus a times the area under the curve. So b is 16, a is 4, and f of x is the square root of x, which is x raised to the 1 half. 16 minus 4 is 12, and the antiderivative of x to the 1 half, 1 half plus 1 is 3 over 2, and then we need to multiply by 2 over 3, and then evaluate it from 4 to 16. So let's move the constants to the front. 2 over 12 can be reduced to 1 over 6. And 1 over 6 times 1 third, that's going to be 1 over 18. So we have 1 over 18, and then x to the 3 halves evaluated from 4 to 16. So this is going to be 16 to the 3 halves minus 4 to the 3 halves. Now, what is 16 raised to the 3 halves? This is 16 to the half raised to the third power. 16 to the 1 half is basically the square root of 16, which is 4. And 4 to the third is 64. Now, for this one, apply the 2 first. The square root of 4 is 2, and then raise it to the third power. 2 to the third is 8. So 4 raised to the 1.5 is 8. And then 64 minus 8 is 56. So we have 56 over 18. And we could divide both numbers by 2. Half of 56 is 28. Half of 18 is 9. So the answer, the average value of the function is 28 over 9. Now, let's calculate the c value that gives us that average value. So the average value of the function in the interval 4 to 16 is that number. f of c is the square root of c. So we need to square both sides. 28 squared is 784. 9 squared is 81. And so this is equal to c. Now, the midpoint of 4 and 16, 4 plus 16 is 20, 20 over 2 is 10. So the average x value is 10. And c has a decimal, 784 divided by 81, that's 9.679. So these numbers are close, but in this example, c is less than the average x value. Now let's calculate the average y value and compare it to the average value of the function. So f of a, that's f of 4, plus f of b divided by 2. f of 4, the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 16 is 4. 2 plus 4 is 6, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Now 28 over 9, 27 over 9 is 3, 28 over 9 that's about 3.1 repeating. So in this case, the average value of the function is greater than the average y value in this problem. Now let's analyze the three examples that we have. So let's draw three graphs. So the first one was a linear function, let me graph it in white, that goes up like this. The second one was x squared, and it looks like that for the most part, and then the square root of x was our last example. So this was 2x plus 1, x squared, and the square root of x. 
Now for the first one, it was between 1 and 5, the midpoint of which is 3. For the second one, it was between 0 and 4, the average x value for that is 2. And for the last one, it was from 4 to 16, with an average x value of 10. Now let's focus on the x values. In this example, c was equal to 3. So c was equal to the average x value. For the second example, c was greater than 2. It was 2.309. And so c was greater than the average x value. And for the third example, c was less than the average x value. It was 9.679. Now let's focus on the y values. When x is 1, y is 3. And when x is 5, y is 11. And the average of those two is 7. Now the average function value was 7 as well. So we could say the average value of the function is equal to the average y value for that example. Now, for the second example, when x is 0, y is 0. When x is 4, y is 16. So the average between 0 and 16 is 8. But the average function value was less than 8. In fact, it was about 5.3 repeating. So the average function value was less than the average y value for that problem. Now for the last one, the square root of 4 is 2. And the square root of 16 is 4. Keep in mind this is not drawn to scale. So the average of these two numbers is 3. However, the function value was 3.1. So for this particular value, or for this particular graph rather, the average function value was greater than the average y value. And let's understand why. So for a linear function, the average function value will equal the average y value. But if it's not linear, it's going to vary. From 0 to 4, if we draw the secant line, Notice that the curve for the function is below the secant line. Therefore, the average value of the function will be less than the average y value. For this one, it's on a secant line, and that's why the average function value is the same as the average y value. For the last example, if we draw the secant line between 4 and 16, notice that the curve is above the secant line, so the average function value is greater than the average y value.